We're going to make the uh, crust for our tartlet with mm -hmm. some soaked almonds. And what else do you have in here? We have soaked almonds and dates. I soaked these about an hour beforehand just so that they softened up a little bit, that we don't have to use as much water when we're doing our food processor, so it's going to come together a little bit more quickly. So you do want to soak these for at least an hour just for the way the recipe will come together. We're going to pour off this water and reserve it just in case we need it. So let's go ahead and put these in here. Do you want to dump these in? Yes, I will put these in. All right. And we have half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. So this may be a little bit loud, and depending on how long you've soaked your almonds and dates will depend on if we need to add water later on. If you're not a big almond fan, you can do pecans, or you can do a combo doing half and half. So it's going to get a little bit loud. Let's look in here and see if we should add some more water. And what is the texture we're looking for in here? So the texture is going to be a little more fine. When you pick it up, you can mold it, which we don't have that texture right now. You can see that they're still pretty large pieces. And we'll add in a tablespoon of water to start. So saving the water came in handy after yeah, all. Yeah, it came in real handy. Almost has like an oatmeal consistency. Yeah, it does. So, we have all this together. So depending on your event, if you're doing a fancy party or if you're just making these at dinner one night, you can do the cute little tartlet pans or I just like to use a mini muffin tin. The important thing with this recipe is that right now this mixture is really sticky. So we want to put a sheet of plastic over top, that way when they are dry they just pop right out. So we'll just tap these in. Press this in here to yeah. make our shapes. And it makes about 12 mini tartlets with this recipe. And then we use a tablespoon, drop it in, and then we'll just kind of shape it to fit the pan. I'm trying to get it even thickness on both sides. And just because this mixture is a little bit kind of sticky right now, we do want to let it dry. Ideally, you want to let it dry for at least an hour before you fill your tartlets. Um, if you can let them dry a little bit longer, say four hours, that's going to be optimum. These do keep well after they dry. You can just put them in an airtight container and keep them in your refrigerator. So you could fill these with Anything, really. Yeah, you can. This could be a good base for savory or sweet. Yeah, it could. If you're doing savory, you probably wouldn't want to add the cinnamon, but you can make a fun little savory tartlet with it. You could add maybe some garlic or some different herbs. The next step in our process for the tartlet, and what are we doing next? We're going to chop up some strawberries. I have our peaches already chopped up here, and we're going to throw in our blueberries. We're going to mix these all together and macerate them in a little bit of coconut milk, meaning we're going to put a little bit of liquid in here to extract even more flavor and liquid from our berries. So I'm going to throw these in here, and then we're going to chop up these strawberries. When you're buying berries, it's really important to get organics, especially since berries are among the dirty dozen. So you want to stay away from those pesticides and just buy organics and clean them really well. And it doesn't hurt that berries are in season right now and they're perfect at the There's some great market. local uh, farms where you yeah. can pick them. and Which is great because you can buy a bunch and then freeze them for smoothies or whatever later on. So I'm just going to chop the stem off here. Go ahead and do all of these.
these smell pretty ripe. So will we be adding any sugar to these? We don't need to. And usually you'll see people add like a little bit, of, like a teaspoon or so of sugar to their strawberries. But since they're fresh, I really like to use the flavor as is. If I need to add a little bit, I just use some liquid stevia. So these are pretty small. We can go ahead and add these. And then we'll just mix these all up and let them sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of coconut milk from our coconut whipped cream in here, just to add a little bit of flavor. Chef Colby, what are we making now? We're gonna start by making a coconut whipped cream. This is a variation of whipped cream, just a little bit healthier. So what we're going to do first, you just take a regular can of coconut milk, keep it in your fridge for about eight hours. That way it's gonna solidify and we can separate the milk from the cream. Since the milk has settled to the bottom, we're gonna flip it. Before you open it, you Before flip it. Before we open it, we flip it. That is gonna have the milk at the top. <clears throat> and we're gonna pour the milk into something separate and you can reserve this for another use. This is at soft peak, so it's very similar to like when you're doing whipped cream. Um, so it's just going to have kind of a light, fluffy texture. So are we ready to spoon our fruit into here? Yes. I'm going to add, since this is unsweetened coconut milk, I'm going to add just a couple of drops of stevia in here to sweeten it up. We can scoop our fruit in. And then we'll top it with our coconut whipped cream. Mmm. All right, I'll add some here. And we'll garnish with a strawberry. Oh, I lost my fruit. <laughs> it's okay. Here's your whipped cream. There you go. So this little tartlet probably takes about 20 minutes of hands-on prep, but you do want to make sure that your tartlets do dry for a couple hours. But this is just a nice summery dish that you can share with friends. Quick and easy dessert. And it looks like you bought it at a really nice bakery and spent a lot of money yeah, on that. Yeah, you can trick a lot of people that way. <laughs> of course. <laughs> this is not going to be easy to pick up and... <laughs> Mmm, very good. So Chef Colby, uh, mm -hmm. if you can't be in our kitchen and we can't <laughs> have you here every day, uh, where can we find you? You can find me at chefcolby.com. I have this, these recipes and other healthy eating recipes located there. And do you have a Facebook page? I do, it's Chef Colby Durden on Facebook. And I post a lot of just healthy eating tips, links to my recipes and just ideas of how to live healthier. All right, well, thanks so much for inviting us into your kitchen today and go check out her blog for more healthy eating options.